Um, and the other talk that I do uh, is usually after they've had a bit of lunch, so they've refueled a bit uh, and got over the genetics bit of the, of the first talk. And I talk to them about the differential diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. And so I cover things like uh, progressive supranuclear palsy, multiple systems atrophy, and vascular Parkinson's. And one of the things, of course, as movement disorder specialists that we have to do is review the diagnosis at every turn, every time we see the patient, every time the patient presents with a new symptom, is it consistent with the diagnosis of Parkinson's? And if not, what else could it be? And I think one of the things that's important to cover is, is what you say to the patient, not only at the initial diagnostic consultation, but then subsequently when you see them in clinic. Many patients will ask, how do you know that I've got Parkinson's disease? And I think it's very important to be able to impart some of that uh, experience and I, I, hope, I hope to do that uh, with using some videos and some real case uh, studies as part of that second session. Uh, the take home messages from that talk really are that one should revisit the diagnosis at every opportunity, uh, not just when the patient comes to see you, but when they may present with a new symptom or sign, and particularly to be aware that if you're co-managing the patient with the nurses, that the nurses are aware of all of those things too. And we think of a number of symptoms and features as being red flags uh, pointing towards another possible diagnosis, so things like orthostatic hypotension, uh, bladder involvement, uh, head drop, as being things that we ought to be on the lookout for and that ought to press those diagnostic uncertainty buttons, if you like, uh, when we're seeing and reviewing patients.